What would be creepier than a creepy looking doll? Why, a creepy doll with a hidden spy cam, of course. Once installed inside the doll's head, simply put her somewhere you need to monitor, then log into your web browser and see exactly what she sees. I knew Toa was raiding the kitchen for midnight snacks. Making this doll cam is really easy. You don't need to do any soldering or programming. We're just connecting off-the-shelf components together. First, you'll need an ESP32 cam module like this one. Make sure it is the cam version and not the regular ESP32, which looks like this one. You will also need an FT232RL Mini USB to TTL serial converter. To connect it all up, you'll need five female to female DuPont jumper cables. You'll also need a mini USB cable. A very common complication is that many cables are only designed to carry power and not data. If you're unable to get your computer talking to your ESP32 CAM module, then try a different cable. If you want to place the doll CAM in a different part of your house, then you'll also need to use a USB power bank. Any power bank will do for this. Finally, you will of course need a doll. Here I'm using a mini Dolphy Dream. Any doll will do, but you'll need to be able to remove her head and also ideally remove her eyes. Most of my dolls have glued in eyes like these, but Misaki here is ideal because her eyes are just stuck into her head with blue tack. Let's build our webcam. So the first thing to do is to connect up the lens of the ESP32 cam onto the ESP32 cam board itself. So you can lift up this little lever here and then it simply slots in and note that the camera lens has to face upwards. So it slots in there and then you can just push down that pin there and you see that it's tightly attached. Depending on your project you can actually get camera lenses with longer leads so they could be quite useful. Notice that unlike the regular ESP32 which does have a USB connector here, there is no USB connector on the ESP32 cam board. So for this reason we need the FT232. This has a USB connector here. With the USB connection, we can download the webcam code onto the device from our computer. We can also power the webcam using a USB power bank. That means you can place the webcam anywhere, although the doll needs to be within the range of your Wi-Fi network. So now we'll connect the jumpers to the FT232 board. And there's a very nice diagram on this randomnerdtutorials.com article. I've linked to it in the description below. So basically you need to scroll down here a bit further, pass the code. So there is a nice diagram here that shows you how to connect them together. I'll just mention that the colour of the jumper cables you use doesn't matter, so you can use any of them. I'll also mention that both modules do have their pins labelled, however the writing on them is very small so you may need a magnifying glass to read it. So on the ESP32 cam board, we will connect the 5 volt pin here onto the VCC pin here. So this is the voltage one. Then we will connect GND on the ESP32 to GND here. That's the ground, so that makes our circuit. The next one is U0R on the ESP32 cam, which goes to TX. And RX on the board goes back to the ESP32 CAM U0T. So these are the two data lines. Finally, we connect another ground, GND, here to the IO0 pin here. And this one, we only put this on if we are programming the ESP32 CAM. So once you've downloaded the webcam software onto it, then you can remove that connection. Once you've made your connections, then you can connect up the USB mini cable here onto the FT232. Then plug the other end into your computer, and when you plug it in, you should hear this noise. If you don't hear that noise, then check your cable because you may just have a power lead and not a data cable. You should also see that the LED here lights up. This one is red, but it's very bright, so it shows up as white. If you haven't already got it installed, you will need to install the Arduino IDE. I've linked to this in the description below. It's available for Windows, Linux, and the Mac OS. Once you've installed it, go to File, and then Preferences, 
So when the settings window appears, you need to go to additional board managers URLs and put in this link here to the ESP32. I'll link to this in the description below as well. You may already have it in there though. So once you've done that, we'll OK that and then go to tools and then board and boards manager. If you type in ESP32 here, then you should see ESP32 by Espressive Systems. If it's not installed, then select a version, probably the latest one, and click on install. Once that is installed, then you can find the ESP32 CAM boards that we need. And to do that, you go to boards and ESP32 Arduino. And if you scroll down quite a way, it's this one here, the AI Thinker ESP32 hyphen cam. So if you select that one, then it should all change here. Once that's done, you can go to file and then examples. And you have to be careful with the scrolling here. So you can scroll down to ESP32, then onto camera and select this camera web server, all one word. Note that it puts some additional files here, but unless you're a real nerd, you shouldn't need to go in and change any of this. So this is the camera web server software that we need to install onto the ESP32 camera. The nice thing is that once we put it on the ESP32, it will remember the code, and even if we take the power off and connect it again, the code will still be on the device. So there's a couple of settings that we need to change here. If you scroll down then, there's a line that says SSID and the following line is the password. These are the IDs of your own Wi-Fi network. So you can normally look on your router and find the SSID and you should also need the password as well. So if you replace these asterisks here with your ID and password. There is one other small modification we need to do to the code. And here, if you find a line at the top that says select camera model, then what you need to do is comment it out. We'll comment out this one using two backslashes here. And we need to change our camera to the camera model AI thinker here. So we will uncomment this. So take those out, which means that it will use this as our camera model. Incidentally, if this one doesn't work for you, then try commenting out one of the other ones, but note that you can only use one of them. I think this one works for most cameras though. So once you've made those changes, then you can go to sketch and upload. You should at the bottom see a little line saying compiling sketch. While it's compiling, I just say that you should also go to tools and then port and check that the right serial port is selected. This is the port that the USB is connected to. On mine it is COM13. If you get problems then you might need to check this. Okay so now it says it's writing and it's taking a while so it is uploading or downloading onto the device. I should also say that the FT232 LED flashes while you're downloading code, so that's often a good sign. If you find that your code doesn't download, sometimes it just puts a line of full stops or something, then on the ESP32 there is a little reset button. Sometimes if you hold that down while you are uploading the code, then that will work. This is particularly important if you've used the ESP32 CAM before, it may have some code left behind, so restarting it normally does the trick. Okay, so now it says hard resetting via RST pin, and we can now check to see if our webcam is working. Okay, so this is a really important part, but once the code has appeared to upload successfully, you need to disconnect one of the wires that's looped around to itself on the ESP32 CAM board. So I'll take one of the wires out. Now we can go to Tools and then Serial Monitor. And if it's not set on it, you need to change the board rate here to 115200. That should match the board rate here in the code itself. So we've changed that. And then if you look carefully, there is a reset button 
on the ESP32 CAM board. It's very small, but if you press it, it will click. So I will press the reset button now. You should see some writing appear in the output window here. Okay, here we go. So it says Wi-Fi connected, starting web server, and starting stream server. And now camera ready, so we can connect using this URL here. So you need to copy it here, and then we'll paste it into a browser. Note that the URL won't necessarily be the same as the URL here. It depends how many other devices you have connected to your Wi-Fi network. So if you press Control and C, we'll copy that into a web browser and see what we can see. So we'll open a browser window and then paste that URL in. So once you paste in the URL, you should see a control panel like this. So there's different things for resolution, quality, brightness, and so on. So if you scroll down to the bottom and click on Start Stream, then this is the webcam itself. Oh, and I should just say that you can change the resolution. Let's change 1600 by 1200. And there's a much better, bigger picture now. So you can't see anything because the webcam is just on the ground, but here it is. Here's some doll accessories. So as you can see, it is actually working and it's streaming quite well. So now let's disconnect it and connect it into our doll. Okay, so I have now fitted Misaki with the webcam and as you can see the cable has come out of the back of her head. It's really useful she has a hoodie with a hole in the back here. I have actually taken her wig off for now but you can see the camera is in her eye there. So now it's installed in her head, let's get the webcam up and running. So I need to connect the USB cable. I should just mention that the webcam can get a little hot, so I wouldn't leave it in a doll for a long time, especially if they're made of something like vinyl. So let's start the stream. Yep, yeah, here we are. The webcam appears to be working. Yeah. You'll notice it's upside down though, so we can use the vertical flip. Okay, that's better. So I'll hold up something. Uh, here we go. So I could only fit it into her upside down, but because you can flip it, it doesn't really matter. So now my Saki cam is all wired up and ready to go. Let's watch and see what happens when I'm not around. Wow, it looks like they're having quite the party there. I'll try and make another video to show how to make a motion activated camera. This is just a thing to detect burglars or rogue pets or even dolls who walk around at night. Have fun with your doll cam and remember to subscribe for more microcontroller projects. Thanks for watching.